Good morning, everybody. Michael the Maven. Today, we're going to be talking about the usability of the Nikon D780. I've been making usability videos for a while. If you haven't seen these, it really deals with how easy it is to operate the camera, which is something that I believe is directly related to the shooting enjoyment. So if you have a really great, you know, spec camera that's kind of a pain in the butt to operate, that's going to affect how much shooting you do and whether or not this is a tool you're going to want in all conditions. If the camera has certain usability features and it's very easy, it's very quick, the button presses are few and minimal, you're gonna have a great time shooting with it. So in the past, what I would do is I would point out the features I liked and didn't like and kind of left it at that. And I had a subscriber come and say, Michael, you've been doing these for a while. Why don't you come up with a scoring system for these cameras that would allow you to rate them? And I was like, wow, you know what? That's a really great idea. So I have come up with a scoring system that allows me to assign points for usability. So I can specifically say on a scale of one to 100, where is this camera falling and why? completely transparent. You'll know exactly how I'm coming up with these numbers. And the beauty of this is if you disagree with me, you can change the score accordingly. You might think, well, I think that feature is worth a little bit more. You can add your own points, but I'm going to do most of the footwork here for you and point out what makes the D780 more or less usable. The way the scoring system works is that I start off with a score of 65, and I add and I subtract points for different things. And I'll put those in the description and on my blog so you can see. There is one glaring omission on the back of this camera. If you own a D500 or a D850, you should see it right away. And that is the lack of a joystick. For $2,300, this camera should have had a joystick. I believe this was a glaring omission. It was the first thing I noticed when the camera came out. I didn't deduct any points for the lack of a joystick when you have a directional pad, but having both would get you plus two. It becomes more usable. As a sports shooter, this joystick right here, it just feels amazing. It's very easy to use. The second thing that I immediately noticed was that when you're in, let's say, the submenu system, this quick menu here, and you're looking at something like white balance, and you come over and you pick cloudy and you just tap it like that and then tap your shutter button, your white balance hasn't changed. It's back to A1. This kind of stuff drives me crazy where you need a multiple press. You have to press it twice to select a feature. Not a huge fan of that. And I've deducted a point because of that. However, most of the stuff on the D780s is pretty great. So the tilting monitor gets a plus one. So you can tilt it up or down. I think it's very nice, very strong, solid, sturdy. The interaction of the touch menu, to be able to interact like this, that gets a plus two. The deep menus also get a plus two. This is very nice in terms of the menu layout. It's not homogenous like Sony cameras where you get lost and you don't know where you are. There's a color coding system, very fast and easy to navigate through the menu systems. When we're talking about pure ergonomics, we have a deep grip which gets a plus two. I love the power switch around the shutter button. That's going to get a plus one. Sony cameras also have that. Dual card slots, that's going to get a plus two. I'm also assigning a half point to customizable buttons. We can customize the two buttons in the front and also the AF on. There's some other buttons that we can customize, but they're not as customizable, so it gets 1.5 points. The quick menus, this is customizable. Sony does the same thing. That's going to get you a plus two. We have locking pins on the mode dial as well as the drive modes. We also have a lock switch over here and each of those get one point each because if you bump those, it doesn't change. I think it's something that's great. I prefer the pins that you can determine whether it's locked or free rotating, but this is more than enough to prevent accidental bumpage. Very nice to be able to charge batteries in camera. We have even a battery indicator light as we're charging right here on the back. And there are a couple other features I decided to give credit for, one of which is good eye detection autofocus. So if you have a camera that does this on a very high level, definitely is going to make the shooting experience more enjoyable. That gets a plus two. Peaking gets plus one. Peaking is a focusing tool that allows us to see a color overlay when we're using manual focus specifically in video. It is very useful. We also have zebras on the D780. 
taking all of these things into consideration, it's it's a heavier camera. I'm almost tempted to take a point off because of that. I'll, I'll make notes of that in the description. But we're pretty much looking at 20 points worth of bonuses, which is going to put this in the range of 85 to 86 in terms of its first Maven usability score. There are other cameras that when I go back and I apply the same rating, they get in the low 70s. So this is a, a pretty highly usable camera. If you're interested in the full methodology of how I'm scoring the camera, definitely check out the links in the description. I'll put the scores in there as well. I'd love to know your guys' thoughts, what I can do to improve the system. Obviously there's gonna be a need for some tweaking in the beginning, but now we have a way to give a usability score to a camera. Thank you guys for watching and I'll see you next time.